Good morning. Uh, as uh, Bill mentioned, I'm going to be talking to you about our exciting new product uh, for the treatment of pancreatic cancer. PAM4 is a humanized antibody designed to target a specific marker expressed primarily by pancreatic adenocarcinoma cells. It delivers a cytotoxic dose of the potent radioisotope yttrium-90, which is attached to the antibody. The driving force behind the genesis of this new product um, was a desire to make a meaningful advancement in treatment options for a disease entity not only has one of the highest morbidity and mortality rates of all known cancers, but also has a true scarcity of known treatments. Pancreatic cancer remains a disease with a dismal outlook. The current treatments for patients with surgically unresectable disease are clearly ineffectual, as evidenced by the fact that uh, the clinical trials of recently approved drugs, such as gemcitabine or Tarceva, uh, had median survivals of only five to seven months. So there's clearly an unmet medical need here uh, and a need for new approaches. The approach we've taken is based on the fact that most pancreatic cancer cells express a large amount of mucinous material on their surface, in particular MUC1, which is uh, a large surface glycoprotein. Capillary disruption within pancreatic cancer masses allows MUC1 at the site to be an accessible target for antibody therapies. As I said, PAM4 is a humanized monoclonal antibody that specifically targets the unique site on the MUC1 found on the pancreatic cancer cells. In preclinical studies, radioimmunotherapy with PAM4 labeled with the radioisotope yttrium-90 was effective and the best results which were observed were observed when yttrium-90 was given in combination with gemcitabine. An initial clinical trial demonstrated the safety of yttrium-90 PAM4 given alone. In this study, several tumors showed transient shrinkage or even stabilization. As I stated previously, there is a distinct unmet need for new medical therapies for advanced pancreatic cancer. The most widely used product today on the market is gemcitabine. Although its cumulative improvement in morbidity and mortality is pretty marginal, Gemzar's total sales in 2007 still topped $670 million. Our current study is a Phase 1B open-label dose exploration study of yttrium-90 label PAM4, administered as one or more treatment cycles of fractionated multi-dose radioimmunotherapy in combination with radiosensitizing doses of gemcitabine as frontline therapy for patients with stage three unresectable locally advanced or stage four metastatic pancreatic cancer. Patients first undergo pretreatment targeting and dosimetry imaging via uptake of a PAM4 antibody labeled with the radio marker indium-111. Once successful tumor targeting and radiation limits have been established, the patients receive three fractionated doses of yttrium-90 PAM4 administered over three weeks. Additionally, each patient is given a non-cytotoxic dose of gemcitabine following each administration of PAM4, which we believe will potentiate the radiation effects of the PAM4 on the cancer cells. To date, we've successfully completed the therapy regimen in three patients at the first dose level, which is 6.5 millicuries per meter squared of yttrium-90 and 200 milligrams per meter squared of gemcitabine. The first patient to receive treatment had a large pancreatic tail mass with multiple liver metastases. Therapy was well tolerated in this patient, and he's currently undergoing his third treatment cycle. It is now 11 months since his initial diagnosis and eight months since uh, his initial therapy began. He continues to have an excellent performance status to date. The second patient who had a pancreatic tail mass, porticable lymph node metastases, and a, an extremely large metastatic liver mass also tolerated the initial treatment very well and has now finished their second treatment cycle. Following treatment, this patient had significant improvements in their performance status and in their quality of life from baseline. Both of these are currently maintained and she continues to do well. A third patient has recently completed a complete course of the therapy and again, this therapy was well tolerated in this patient. Patient accrual is actively progressing and we anticipate a significant acceleration in enrollment as we continue to activate several new sites with large patient populations with pancreatic cancer. Now, for some of the results in these initial patients, here we have some of the uh, early results from the first patient. As you can see, there were mo 
modest but significant decreases in tumor size at four weeks post-therapy. When we look at the PET scan data seen on the right, we see dramatic changes that have occurred in uh, tumor metabolic activity. The SUV, as a measure of metabolic activity, has decreased within the primary mass by more than half, and the three largest liver metastases are now indistinguishable from the surrounding tissues, indicating a relative state of metabolic inactivity. This slide shows the PET CT fusion images from the same patient. In comparing the baseline on the left to the four-week post-treatment scan on the right, we can see a dramatic decrease in the metabolic activity within the primary pancreatic tail mass, as was reflected in the decreased SUV value. The true 3D PET imaging for this patient give you a better appreciation of the size of not only this pancreatic mass, but also of the three large liver metastases I mentioned. As you can see here, treatment with TAM4 has significantly lowered the metabolic activity within each of these lesions at the four-week time point. This image is an example of uh, the high specificity of tumor targeting we get with the PAM4 antibody. As you can see here in patient two, PAM4 labeled with the indium-111 marker is being selectively taken up by not only the primary pancreatic mass, but also both sites of significant metastatic disease. Uh, note here that there is relatively little uptake in, of the antibody in the, uh, in the normal body tissues. This is significant. With these images, we, uh, we feel confident that we are delivering the cytotoxic payload of the Y92, its intended target. Here we have the PET-CT fusion images from patient two. As you can see, the majority of the larger liver lesion has had a significant impairment in metabolic activity following the treatment. This corresponds with our recent CT data that indicate that this lesion has had a dramatic reduction in actual overall size. Again, we see here that this patient's primary pancreatic mass and the adjacent uh, metastatic disease within the lymph node complex has had dramatic reductions in overall activity. Those are both quite striking. And finally, from the 3D PET image uptake here, we see um, confirmation of the initial findings. As you can see, activity in the primary lesion and the lymph node mass has been reduced to near background activity, and the change in the large liver lesion suggests not only significant changes in metabolism, but also a dramatic size decrease, which we did confirm by CT scan. We believe that these early results from both of these patients are suggestive of initial phase of a drug effect that will hopefully lead to not only halting the pathologic progression of this aggressive disease, but also to increase survivability and improve quality of life in these patients. 